I could spend hours out in the forest studying the chimpanzees. These were the best days of my life. So why did I leave? I could still be there. 1986, I helped to put together a conference to bring together scientists who by then were studying chimpanzees in six other parts of Africa. We had a session on conservation and it was shocking. Forests were being destroyed. The human population in Africa was moving further and further into chimpanzee habitat. And there was still the live animal trade, shooting mothers to steal their babies. The chimpanzee population had been falling from something like two million in the wild at the beginning of the 20th century to something more like a tenth of that figure by the time you reach the 1980s. What ultimately concerns all of us, I guess, is stopping chimpanzees being taken from the wild. But in general, what I'd like to do is just let, uh, have a free flow discussion, Jane. By 1986, Jane was a very important ally for chimpanzees because she was really quite well known. Jane Goodall. Um... <laughs> but as I remember it, Jane was not personally directing her energies towards thinking about chimps outside Gombe. It was sometimes even a matter of frustration, hoping that Jane might make some public statements about what we saw to be a tricky problem. I think the animal rights issue is something I've been dodging for quite a long time just because it is a hot, tricky issue and because I'm not the sort of person who likes taking the limelight. I really like sitting in the forest at Gombe and getting on and observing the chimps. But it's become apparent that I have to use this uh, power, if you like, of bending the ear of very many people to help the creatures who have put me in a position to do just that. I went to that conference as a scientist, planning to carry on with that wonderful life, and I left as an activist. We need the sound of the animals in this Earth summit, not just people. Are there any environmental threats in that area of Tanzania, like habitat destruction, that we should be concerned about? Unfortunately, in Tanzania, like all across the chimps range in Africa, the habitat is disappearing. Did you like it better when you were unknown? I would give anything to be able to go back to the days when I actually could be out at Gombe and be with the chimps and just immerse myself in that wonderful world. But once you realize that you can try to make a difference, then, well, it would just be totally selfish. I couldn't do that anymore. So if I went back now, I would be unhappy. So you go public, in effect, for them? For the chimps. Mm -hmm. If I stopped doing that, I would feel a real traitor because they've done so much for me. The Jane Goodall Institute is named after Jane Goodall. Initially, it was conserving chimps, and then very quickly, say, we must conserve their habitat. But it is broadened out to human welfare over the whole planet. Climate change, it's happening. If we lose hope, then we may as well all give up. If we think there's no way forward, and that we're doomed, as many scientists tell us, then eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we're going to die. <laughs> but we mustn't let it happen. You know, my job is to go around and inspire people and get them to take action. The message is, we are part of the natural world. There's billions and billions of little unknown creatures down in the soil. And that's what industrial farming is destroying. And as we destroy the natural world, we're destroying our own future, not only wildlife. And once you take action, once you're doing something, once you feel, well, it's my little bit, but I'm going to do my little bit. And I'll die easier if I have done my little bit. Even if it's no use, I'm going to die trying.